And good afternoon, everyone. Happy Saturday to you. It's five o'clock and you know what that time is. That is the time for Into the Absurd. So very happy that you've joined us today. I'm Tina Brock, your host for the next 50 minutes here at the Idiopathic Radiculopathy Consortium in Philadelphia. And alongside Erica Holscher and Bob Schmidt, we are who are flying this plane today. We're so delighted that you are here with us. If you're in the Zoom room, welcome, welcome. If you are joining us on Facebook Live, we're very delighted to have you today and to talk for the next 50 minutes with Jill Harrison. Jill is the creative producer and director and educator, founder and executive director of Directors Gathering here in Philadelphia. And for the next 50 minutes, we're gonna talk about what it means to support the work of directors in the region and the steps that Jill took along the way in her life and in her education to decide that she wanted to found Directors Gathering. So join us with your questions in the chat today for the next 50 minutes. I'll do my very best to get to those questions throughout the conversation and let's get on with it. Jill Harrison, welcome to Into the Absurd. Hi there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. What a beautiful intro. That music is great. Yeah, well, I think these, I, I'm really glad you're here too. And, and part of that <laughs> is because I feel like so, something central to the conversation, I know I certainly feel it, is this, the idea that we don't often get the chance to meet other directors or to mm -hmm. sit in the room or to talk for periods of times, which I believe is probably what you were thinking when forming Directors Gathering, which I definitely want to get to the genesis of that, but which is all just to say, it feels good to sit with another director in a room <laughs> to try to ask you some questions about what you were thinking as you know, during your education and along the way. But that's the part I actually would like to go back to if we could Yeah. start back. Um, you went to Lehigh University, graduated uh, and studied theater, correct? Then went over to, to Temple. Yes. What was the thing that was in your mind when you're thinking, yeah, I gotta get my graduate degree in directing? Sure. I, I think that's a, a really great question. And I think that question is an evolve, still an evolving <laughs> one. <laughs> now that I'm almost 10 years out of grad school, which is, is blowing my mind a little bit. Um, I, what was coming to my mind, I had graduated from Lehigh in 05 and then I, um, in 2005, and then I went to New York and Williamstown Theater Festival. Um, and I had done what we do is we make our theater, we make our own theater, we self-produce. Um, and I found that I work best when in ensemble and collective. And I was really missing that uh, as a freelancer, emerging theater director in New York. Um, and so it was twofold. It was when I was missing that sense of ensemble. And I was also, I was missing director-centric technique um, that I could, that I began while at Lehigh, um, but felt like I was hitting up against a wall of what I needed in order to deepen my work and um, and just, yeah, make compelling theater uh, and do so in a way that was effective and fruitful as the, the vision and voice in the room. Um, and so that was the Anna Shapiro who is a director and um, now well, was running Northwestern's MFA directing program is now the artistic director of Steppenwolf. Um, but she asked, when I was looking at programs, I sat down with her and she said, look, what, what, is that, what is that nebulous question? You have to find that nebulous question for yourself as you're looking at a program because it's a significant residency and it's something that you need to get something out of it as much as they're gonna get out of you. And that, question that kept, you know, just rolling around for me was this sense of um, where is the ensemble of directors? Where is the craft of directors? Uh, and I had, was just really interested in the lineage of it. Um, and so while I did not end up with Anna at Northwestern, <laughs> I did deeply appreciate her question. Um, I did end up at Temple here in Philly um, when at the time Doug Wager was running the program. And um, he is from that American theater director lineage. He ran a arena stage when arena stage still had an acting company. Um, Zelda Fishlander was his mentor. 
um, Garland Wright was Zelda's colleague. So again, there was that sense of uh, director centric collective and the history of it. Um, and so I found like I had, oh, and they collected, I was one of four other directors, which graduate programs for directors is usually two that matriculate for three years, where this was a guinea pig, let's put five, five directors together for two straight years mm -hmm. and kind of see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, so how did you finally, or did you finally answer the nebulous question that Anna Shapiro, um, <laughs> I mean, that's a, yeah, what was the answer? Yes. Or I mean, is I'm, the answer still happening? Yeah, you know, I was just going to say that, Tina. I'm I'm living the answer, um, and, and which, right? I mean, I think that's what because the the answer is forever. I was right. going to plug my my someday memoir and workbook yeah. for directors and vision, which is it's forever emerging. It's right, right. Um, when you I, were oh no, go ahead. No, you, no, no, you go. You no, go. no, 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 you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be much more interesting. I can always get to this question I've got, but I no, go ahead. It. This is what happens with fellow directors in a room. Like, Your idea <laughs> first. My idea. <laughs> it's like, I know, we'll respond. I'll respond. Um, no, I, I, it was that sense of really, it, it was the ensemble. It was what happens if, and it was ensemble, it was history, and it was vision. And I loved learning about the sense of a director as, as a visionary artist who's mm -hmm. at the center of the production. And we don't see theater. We literally do not see, witness, and experience theater without a director. And it was not until Temple and Doug Wager and my colleagues that that was named for me. Um, and I had been seeing it. At, I interned at New York Theater Workshop, it was assisting Craig Lucas and Bart Sh Bartlett Schur at the time before I went to grad school. I was around directors who were doing that. Um, I'm going, this, it's like they can't help but direct. It's in their DNA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, and then I learned that Bart's, call, Gar Bart's mentor was Garland Wright. I get, you're just, you're just, <laughs> I get seeing these seeds mm -hmm. of, oh, or, Ruben Santiago Hudson, who recently came and did uh, a seminar with directors gathering in the summer of 2019. Ruben is another great example of someone who comes from American theater as a visionary artist and a director and is an interpreter of August Wilson's work, right? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing these directors at the helm um, and at the center of the growth of our medium and our field. Yeah. So so this idea of being visionary in your in your in as a director and your directing ideas that is that is an aspect that isn't always there mm -hmm. would you say i mean i mean can you can you see clearly the difference oh uh, um yes can would you mind tina would you give that question to me one more time just so i'm well I, the word visionary came up a couple of times. And mm -hmm. so what, what I got to thinking about was, as you were speaking, do, do, I mean, I know when I'm reading, for instance, if I'm reading through a play, it's happening in my mind in, in that, in the stage of your mind. But I wonder, is that something that people just innately come to the table with this idea of, I can see it, I can smell it, I can taste it. And you would hope that would be the case, but do you, do you think that all people are, all directors are innately visionary? Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, cool. <laughs> I thought that's where we were heading and I just wanted to- That's ask. not the way I phrased it the first time. No, though. that's, <laughs> but I, thank you. That's great. Um, yeah, so I also ha have had, a, you know, I've had the honor of um, seeing so many directors work by this point that I would name it, um, yes, there's an, there's an innate desire um, an innate um, verve, if you will, <laughs> right? Like it's in your bones, mm -hmm. it's in your spirit and how you can then convey that, I think is what is where the vision lies. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think you're gonna experience different worlds and processes, even in a production in, if, as per director, right? So you're gonna look at someone who's a dramaturg, I can name them like a vision coming through something dramaturgically or a vision coming through something as interpreter of the playwright and new play. Um, and that, that world and that experience will feel different 
than a director who comes at a piece of theater in a process uh, as, as a physical artist and a physical maker or someone who um, generates from nothing, right? So we, here in Philly, we have, so, it's a, oh my gosh. I mean, we are so lucky to have this city full of fo Tina, folks like you and folks like Becky Wright and Alex Tora and Adrian Mackey. And, and they're just, they're running Sam Tower and they're just, they're running these companies, but they're, they're creating the experiences and they are all theater directors that are at the center of generating that experience. And some of them have dramaturgical backgrounds that are like ripping up, you know, ripping open text and finding intention and are gonna work with actors in that kind of moment to moment way. But some of those directors are, you know, gonna come at it from a, you know, text goes, com comes out of a, a, a physical exploration first an ensemble exploration first, or a question. <laughs> I mean, like Alex Tora and his colleagues and they with Team Sunshine, I mean, those are, they're doing this, this project right now that's like spanning 20 years. <laughs> and so that's, that's questions and that's engagement with audiences and collaborators that they're working with over a 20 year investment. Um, I think it's just remarkable. Um, and you see, and you can feel it and you can see it. Uh, and I, over time, I, I worked for, I assisted to direct, I assisted Bart, then I assisted another director and both of them were very different directors. Bart's a very visual director, uh, right? I mean, he, mm -hmm. Craig Lucas likes to say he, he paints the stage, mm -hmm. right? As we know. Um, and as you know, cause you worked with him too in the <laughs> director's gathering. Um, so he paints the stage. Pina Bausch is some of his influence. And then uh, the director I worked with um, through grad school and here in Philly, you know, is more dramaturgical. And so more moment to moment, we're scoring and anal you know, analyzing text. We're really, really close to actors. It's very actor centric of an experience. So I had the opportunity to watch and engage with two very different ways in. And it, ha it took me a little while, actually, <laughs> actually, it took collaborators that I work with to go, Jill, what you're doing is actually really useful and somewhat unique because you had an opportunity to be exposed to two very different ways of working and you're now finding the in-between. Mm -hmm. And so you're working with actors and you're working in a visual way and you're putting mm -hmm. it together. Does that answer the question? Oh, it, to it totally answers the question. I guess, and I had so many questions along the way. The most recent one uh, <laughs> is, <laughs> can you point to a, a specific experience you were having with any one of those directors mm. where you had a moment or a series of moments over the course of time being in the room where you found yourself you found yourself in that, in their technique, in what they were doing in there. Um, was there a particular, I mean, did you feel a kindred spirit say with the visual painting the stage of Bart? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it is so funny. I used to, it, it, before working with him, I named it as a sense of like, I'm a very visual movement oriented director. And that's where like I, I'm a, I am a, um, I really enjoy choosing music for a piece and whatever piece it is, right? Like that's where I usually begin. I begin with music, mm -hmm. I begin with movement um, and I begin with imagery. And so that when I, when I saw him doing all of that, I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. <laughs> this exists. Um, and, and not only does it exist, it has eons of history behind it. Um, and so that, and also what I love so much too, is that by creating this, and I, you know, it's visioning, by creating this sense of visioning as a director, it does not matter if you're directing an opera. And this is why Bart has such a prolific career in this way, because it, it doesn't matter if you're directing opera or tech off or anything in between, he is going to come at it with a sense of you're, you're inviting a piece of and, and, you know, a piece of soul and art in a world. And it's your job to activate that. Um, and I, I, I do that as much as I possibly can. 
Um, and uh, yeah, and something, I mean, something that we defer in, <laughs> which I also, it, he, um, I will speak mainly to me. I'm also a, he's a feeler as well, but I, I am a, a very deep feeler. And I really love to connect to the, the people as much as possible mm -hmm. that I'm collaborating with. Um, and so I think that depth, I really, that's my innate way in as well um, of innately reading rooms, mm -hmm. innately reading humans that are playing these roles. Um, and I, you know, I, in grad school, it was introduced to me this concept of getting together with designers to, to break bread before you do anything else. And I, I, that to me, that again was like, oh, but of course your, your fellow humans embarking on this adventure together, um, you know, how much you can learn from each other even before you start talking about the actual thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, I definitely, I feel that essence. So is that ensemble piece that you were really looking for and, and wanting to integrate into the work that you did, that's, a, that's about that connection with, your, mm -hmm. with, with, with the actors, that sort of deep sense of understanding and helping that person. Is it as much about understanding who they are because you think, because that helps you to understand how then to guide them? Mm -hmm. Or is it less, is it more just, I just want to be close to you as a person, or is it mm -hmm. both of those things, do you think? Because I guess the question yeah. that's coming up for me in my mind is when you have to make uh, sort of a decision about um, painting the picture and, and, and you need to also value so specifically and magnificently the, the human beings that are, that are painting that picture for you, how do you... Um, how do you navigate that? Is it through that deep intuition and understanding of who those people are? Because mm -hmm. it's, a, I guess, long story short, it's, it, it can be a pretty short period of time if you're working with people that you've never worked with before to get the DNA on it, right? On the mm -hmm. psychology of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I wonder, is it, is it the ensemble part? Is that just being close to other artists in the room? Or is it really more trying to get to understand who they are psychologically so that in the service of the art, you can best guide them yeah I you know I I I think it's both I I always think it's both <laughs> um I think yeah it's getting it's getting to know the people that I'm that I'm working with um because I think it is important especially it's a it's, folks will argue with me on this one uh it, depending on who you talk about or talk talk to about it who, how, who we define theater at, like whose medium is it? Is it an actor's medium? Is it a playwright's medium? We like to say that film is a director's medium. Um, so it's interesting to, you know, to me, it's, it's not my butt on the stage, it's the actor's butt on the stage in the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, so I really, and if it's a new play, it's the playwright's. Mm -hmm everything yeah. up on that stage it's not just their mum right it's their whole right. existence it, here it is it's the whole family has come Woo! to the stage yeah yeah <laughs> heart soul and center um even if it is a play that has nothing to do with their lives it's there and so to me it's it's honoring all of mm -hmm. that constantly um it's also why i am so deeply grateful for the um advent of and and um, investing in and utilizing of intimacy direction and intimacy mm -hmm. directors and having accessibility practices at the center of processes inside and outside of a room. Um, because again, it, what I find to be so useful there is it's honoring the human mm -hmm. who's doing the work and then it's honoring the work and the practice. And so it helps, it, it really, I worked with an intimacy director for the first time in fall of 2019 and it was on circle mirror transformation um, by annie baker mm -hmm. and it it just it changed my whole way of like oh, what am i going to say it didn't actually what it named what i my innate and it named what i would usually do for like human to human to be like but actually it can be about the work as well and also it gives everybody in the whole room of all walks of life and ways of doing things, 
a safe model for us all to plug into and a safe way of talking about things and the work for all of us to plug into um, or plug out of. And mm -hmm. so we can be people together, but then also if there's, if there's challenges, if there's um, a part of the process or the piece that we're just not getting and we're at it and we're at it and we're at it, it's what tools for us all to be like, look, as a human, I, I need to tap out. Like, I just can't, I can't keep at this. I know I'll, we'll get there. Um, but it really helps release us as well that like our work, the work is imperative. I like to say that we're changing, we're, we're changing and saving creative souls. We're not changing and saving actual people. So, you know, we're not saving yeah. lives. Right. Yeah. But there we're actual people in a room that need to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So balancing those things and then also doing the work. I think sometimes I have, well, I have had collaborators give me this feedback, which I've been deeply grateful for. I, I can really get into something and, and want to do the work. Um, and I'm not, I'm not personally, um, the most in, well, and me personally, I'm not the most inspired by saying we're one big family in a room. Um, I think that can get tricky. Um, uh, where I'm just, where we are humans. I'm here to respect that. And, and, but I'm also here, this is my job. <laughs> this is, this is the, this is the work. So I think sometimes too, if, if I get too into that, like if I swing too much to this is, this is the work, um, it can sometimes be like, okay, but I need to tap out an actor saying like, I need a breath. Right. Because I'm at it being like, oh, but it, I think it's this, I think it's this, I think it's this. Right. Um, I know that well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I, I do think those, those competing hats are quite hard, right? If you're mm -hmm. feeling, your deeply feeling self is in there, that deeply feeling part of you is connecting with the actors as well. And you're picking up every micro nuance that's happening, character related, actor related, you name it. It's a human energy that's flowing through the room. And then you've got this other this artist in you that is painting this lovely stage picture and that's a whole nother thing happening you know yes. it's like the whole everybody's at the party together there and mm -hmm. who needs to speak up at any given time sometimes i, I hear what you're saying yes it can be a tricky um a it tricky is I, I i so the energy i love you naming the energy in the room i'm also an empath and so that's another thing to with a deep feeler mm -hmm. is i also appreciate being able to name tapping out for anybody because I suck all of that in, <laughs> right? So right. like I see directors in my life who directing um, just is a high, it's a constant high for them. It's like they run the best marathon ever or they went on the best vacation ever. Like for them across, they have to, they have to direct or they will die. Uh, where I am more of a, when I'm in it, I feel, I feel those as that essence of like, I, I need to be a part of this process. Um, but because I suck so much up of the room into myself, I get, I, it's exhausting. I, you know? Yeah, I, I do. I do know. Um, and I guess that's the question is like, let's use that sort of runner on a marathon. You know, I'm, I'm envisioning <laughs> you on some like mountain and, and very vertical, you know, like going yeah. very straight up. And there is like, twigs and things and whatever like monsters coming in from the side or whatever to kind of and and you're and you're absorbing all of that how is that is that where you use the tap out part is that your landline when you start yeah. to just absorb too much you either turn it over to your ad step aside um mm -hmm. it's the managing of all that that i think for for a deep for a deep feeler like like you know who you are i think that can be can be it is tricky sliding, you know, it is, it is. And I think I, along with intimacy direction and the sense of giving, naming it and, and practices that are, that are centric to, um, just healthy humans making the work. Um, there's more of a, of a, um, so the drama league, um, I have good friends who, who work at the drama league and, and been running the, um, their director's project there. And then director's gathering is working with Peroni Sivzada, a regional theater director um, who has worked with us. She's the creator of Jam. And um, she's coming back to teach a seminar at the end of this month with um, directors about 
centering um, a sense of creating rooms from equality and justice and self-care. Like what a concept. And I know that self-care has been more and more of a growing practice in our country. Um, I say over the last couple of years, it's been really revved. Um, but I think it's been a little late to theater because <laughs> I mean, anyone sure. doing a 10 out of 12. Right. <laughs> anyone um, running a theater company under, yeah, sure. Just like right. let's include everybody because exactly. at whatever level you're working, there's some challenge that you have. Yeah, I mean, yes. And I think that, so what I love so much about what Perone is introducing is this sense of, yeah, your work as a director, your visioning and your technique as a director that needs to be matched with your awareness and recognition of yourself as a human and how you do that for yourself in a process in a room. And then therefore that's hopefully um, centering that for everybody else. Um, an it's extra psychoanalysis. Yeah, I mean, my gosh, because you know what? But Tina, self-care so psychoanalysis. It is self-care. But, and the thing is, just, no, it's not our job. Nobody does that for us. Right. Directors are usually the only one in the room. If there's only usually one director in the room, right? Um, we don't, there's not usually a collective of us in a room. Um, mm-hmm. And processing pre in it and out of it. I mean, as a freelancer, you just roll. Right. And you're like, I need the next gig and I need to keep plowing and and I got to get this show up. And if it's you know, if it if it works and it's successful in the sense that what however you're defining, whatever that means, but but there's so there's all of these other levels of but what is success in a production on the stage? Is it the actors feeling it is the actors feeling safe, like they can give their best work, you know, but it's also mm-hmm you not perhaps going home and being up for four hours thinking, okay, that moment, could I go back at like, how do I go back and fix that now? Because it's not only a blocking problem, it's a psychological problem. (laughs) You know, and I can't take it back. No, no. And you can't, and you're living your, and right. And also it's not, you're not, well, I know you sometimes are on stage, but I'm, (laughs) I'm never on stage within that relationship. So if that choice is being made, you're right. Like that, that is the choice. Well, once in production, like that's the choice. And we have to find peace with that. I mean, our job is also usually as a freelancer is we're done opening night, this thing goes up and then it runs and you may come back. You may not. And when you do come back, it's like, Hey, how are you? Like, it's not really, so, who are you? <laughs> and you are, we're like, you know, yeah, doing, yeah. and, but that's a mark of a, that's the process. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think there's some, it's so important for us to have um, uh, um, Tamanya Garza, who's a director in Philly, um, who is just remarkable, but she, she puts it towards ritual, right? So creating rituals for, for the beginning of every rehearsal and the end of every rehearsal, how it begins and how it ends. And then also the, so- the, the idea of, for a director, how are you, your whole process? What is your welcoming in this process? And what is your putting this process to sleep for you? Um, mm-hmm. And how do you give that, that gift to yourself? Because you deserve it. My God, like, I mean, <laughs> we have to. Because um, yeah, so it's director, it is, it's director, um, I like to say creative therapy for us. Very, very, very much so. I guess <laughs> um, I want to, I want to ask you a question about, um, so in, in Ann Bogart's book, she talks a little bit about in a director prepare. She talks about, I wanted to be a director because I wanted to have, I want to get her words right here, um, the challenge of divisiveness and articulation hmm. in daily life. I didn't, you know, directing chose me as much as I chose it. And I often, what struck me about that is a lot of people will say, well, you know, directors are just all control freaks and they can't, you know, <laughs> and, and, and when I heard, when I read her phrase it that way, I want a sense of, of, of dis- decisiveness and articulation, I think mm. is so, I mean, the hallmark of, of a director, I guess, but as a personal hallmark, I think that's a really interesting way of thinking about it. Um, do you think that directing chose you? Um, I, I love that question. I, you know, it's so funny. Um, I know Erica isn't actively in this conversation right now, but <laughs> she's <laughs> driving the plane right now. Erica Holscher <laughs> is driving the plane, yeah. but Eric, I'm, I don't know if Erica was aware of this because my directing 
pursuits and process did start at Lehigh. Um, and to be completely transparent, it began in a way where I was, I, there's another chapter in Anne Bogart's book and it's called Terror. Yes, yes, I chapter. read it today. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first chapter I read. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, um, Gus Ripa, who at the time was running the program, he's still there, um, but he was chair when I was there and he was also my advisor. Um, I had been matriculating as an acting focus. And um, I think it was sophomore year that I remember being in his office and him saying, I really think you should take directing. And I, I the, seriously, what I remember most of my body is terror. <laughs> it's, it's not, isn't that crazy? And really? Yes. I, Cause I back to the, like, and I, I saw that Robin put a question in the chat about yeah. what is the difference between being an empath and a deep feeler. And I, I think when it, in relationship to like, and I want to name this because it's how I felt with, with direct, it's how I still feel about directing is deep feeler is about you. Like you as the person, you are a deep feeler. And so is being an empath is about you because it starts with you. But an empath is also about other people. You suck in all the deep feeling from other people. You're a magnet for everything <laughs> happening. Every tiny right piece of energy that is flying out of another and you put 15 people in a room and that's a lot of stuff coming to your magnet to you yes yes right and, you know and as a young you know as an emerging artist at that time that was all I was thinking which was what and directing chose me I, as, as that visioning and I think Gus saw that and was saying like look you're asking me about the lighting choices <laughs> You want to know why that costume was like, he could already start seeing that, that creative need in me to want to know those choices and want to be a part of those choices. So mm -hmm. that definitely started showing up uh, innately and still is there. But I think the terror and the terror is still of that, emp em you know, empath needing to like make sure that everybody is feeling okay at all times. And is the terror because it's such a large responsibility, do you think, that like it's almost mm -hmm. an impossible responsibility on some level? Do you think it's that? It is. It is. And it's, it's embracing the impossibility. Like that is, there it is. Like that is inherently the truth of theater making. You're never done. There's no such thing as right. It's completely mm -hmm. subjective. <laughs> it's always bleeding heart. And if it's not bleeding heart, it's not theater. Like, mm -hmm. It's not, so, if it's not soul bearing, it's not theater, right? That is, that is the heart, the heart and core of the, of the medium. And so that's, and, and this is what's tricky about me too, is I can, and I think a lot of directors where we can be perfectionists. We, we, we want to mm -hmm. drive towards a, to a deliverable, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, it's, I, I now, I've been running a nonprofit for six and a half years. So there's an arts admin kind of person in me too. So I like answers. I like being a part of solutions. Uh, and that is not necessarily useful in a creative process. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I well to know that, right. You're just trying to keep your eye on the sort of that mountain at the end of the hill, which is where you've got to get to. But in the meantime, people are losing shoes and toes are broken and things are happening and you have to stop at the first aid station to make sure yeah. you're being taken care of or else you have, you know, right. You have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, and I, yeah. And so I think the responsibility that lift um, and then finding, you know, also finding one's voice, one's, one's artistic voice and then own, own human voice within that journey. You really got to do that for yourself. Because again, if you're helming processes and if folks, you know, I also, George C. Wolf has this awesome, he made this awesome statement, the answer's in the room, right? So no matter what room you're in, whenever, what process you're in, it does not matter who's in that room, that, no, it matters who's in that room. I take that back. It matters who's in that room, but also you look to the whole room for the answers. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, I love that. And that has helped over time. Yeah, there's this great, and I'm going to get it wrong, but yes, and another thing that just popped out at me when I was reading Terror in Ann Bogart's book today, I listen until there's movement and then I swim. 
Mm-hmm. You no, know, mm-hmm. I listen, I sit, yes. I listen until there's movement and then I jump in. I think that's so, so mm-hmm. beautiful and, and extraordinary. Um, so Directors Gathering got formed in 2014, is that, that right? That is right, yep. And, and, and so you were in New York, you were at New York Theater Workshop and Playwrights mm-hmm. Horizons, mm-hmm. and then you came back to Philly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and for with uh, for family reasons, right? Because you started your family, or was it that you came back? From oh, it? yes, no. So I uh, I was in New York before grad school, and so then oh, Temp- okay. Temple, yeah. Okay. So Temple brought uh, me here, okay. um, and then we stay. We I, the 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 plan was to I graduate Temple, we go back to New York, um, and I graduated Temple and fell madly in love with the directors in this town um, and their, their process and work. And also my, my husband, Tom Snyder, uh, was hired uh, for a full-time production management job at Swarthmore College. And um, as freelance theater artists, <laughs> one, coach, one fresh out of an MFA program, one of us having a job um, was, a good, was a good deal. So uh, he, we, he took that job and, and that is, has since has kept us here and we're deeply grateful for, I mean, not just the job, we're also, the Swarthmore Theater community has become, has become really just a wonderful um, hub and home, a creative home for both Tom and I um, and, they've, and directors gathering. Um, so that's been really special. And, uh, and yes, and then uh, I went back and forth for a while. I was I'm working on some shows for some friends in New York um, and that was another thing too. I graduated in 2011 from Temple and I was still working in New York mostly. Um, but what I was finding is that <laughs> I really cared more about the director, the, my fellow directors in Philadelphia and the work they were doing than I really at the time was just jazzed by my own career trajectory and the work I was doing in New York, which was very interesting. Um, and, a, and a real kind of like, uh, just reckoning, <laughs> a reckoning and dawning of spending that much time of my life, to, you know, building my own career uh, and being like, but you know what I think I care and my career is about more than just my projects and my work. I think it's about an ecosystem of directors as visionaries and their work. We might have a visitor in a oh, moment. And it- Please. Your husband or a oh, no, I, my child. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, all are welcome here. Oh, wonderful. Hi. Can you say hello really quick? Hi, please join the conversation. <laughs> this will be um, Big all of these meetings are things that, you know, however many times my son sat in the ran the sound for shows or was doing whatever it's it's all it all matters it all counts well join thank us you. thank you are you gonna stay with us or are you gonna go do something else do you have something to say I'm bored. okay you're bored well do you want to sit here <laughs> <laughs> go watch the show it's really thank exciting you. you can come sit here if you want if you want to do that you want to go why don't you go see daddy for a little bit okay can you give me a moment moment this is a really important conversation okay <laughs> all right i'm gonna talk about it about our journey. Does that sound good? Okay. Well, you can hang out here and listen. It's up to you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. We're back. Um, <laughs> such a familiar, um, I mean, all, all granted, we weren't doing, you know, Zoom things way back when, when my son was, you know, five and six and seven, but the, the juggling, the balancing of, and exp- I think, how rich it must be for children to grow up in an environment where their parents are pursuing the arts. You know, it really wasn't that way in my house. And I, I think that's something, that's a gift that you, you know, that is really, (laughs) is really special. How, how do you find it? Um, uh, (laughs) Come sit. Was in, in your house, I think let's phrase it differently. In your house, did you, were you surrounded by art? Was it? Um... Yeah, I, I, so it was so cool about how I, I, my upbringing was, um, it was a very, um, I'd say like dynamic and hybrid. And I'm very much a product of how it, how it, how we were brought up. So we were very, my parents, um, and I'm deeply grateful for this. My parents brought us to see theater. Um, we were active members of a community theater group 
growing up called Show Kids Invitational Theater, aka Skit, which is still going in North Jersey. Um, and I grew up being in all of those shows and my dad would be backstage building sets and my mom would be selling tickets and being an usher. So they were both just a part of that process. And it was treated for me, especially like, and this is what I love too. It was treated for me like, you know, a kid who did horseback, like horseback riding was their thing or soccer was their thing um, or the debate team, whatever that was for them, right? That theater was <laughs> that, yeah, and theater was that for me. And what I loved is that, my, you know, my dad wasn't, wasn't coaching, but he was backstage yeah. and my mom was same thing. And what I also love though, is that, so I have three younger siblings and what I love so much is that they embraced what all of us did, but they all, God bless them they all still came to see the shows mm -hmm. that we were doing and and two of them were ended up being in them too and so what was so awesome about that is over time that we're now all adults and three out of four of us have kids and the arts are now in varied ways immersed in our lives um and in ways yeah. that that i think are so important that they are now have all become patrons of the arts um, are all very present in our, um, just in our, as citizens of our country, mm -hmm. um, of community members in their communities. And so, and all, I would say that that all came from a sense of being in a household that really supported creativity um, and theater making. Uh, I did, you know, and that, the, now Stella, my daughter Stella is, she's grow like I didn't grow up in a theater <laughs> my parents didn't work in a theater where my our daughter lives like she work goes to a theater <laughs> so you right. know I mean she's very immersed in it in a way although yeah. you know I do think um it sounds quite wonderful to to have been doing shows in community theater and have your mother doing the tickets and your dad backstage <laughs> building the sets I mean I think in the same way that we get a sense of cohesion and 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 joining in sports or in it it's a home it's a place it's a it's an appreciation for um for so many things that i think sets the stage for you know our our yeah. success in and and our just navigation through the world it is and it i hear here and it's a sense of it back to like that also sense of catalyst right so it's creative being a creative maker and a theater maker. And, I, and then as a director as well as I, you are building communities. And that's another thing too, that I really enjoyed about Philadelphia theater and the, the Philadelphia, those who make theater in this, in this town is that, so like, for example, the theater company, Theater in the X, I mm -hmm. use, I, I speak a lot about what the work they do and also Power Street Theater Company. And what I find to be so awesome about what those two companies do is they make theater with and for the communities that um they're, they're 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 making it with them and then for them and it reminds me so much of how theater was when i was growing up uh and it bridges that sense of professional theater that's in a theater you know that's like in a theater like playwrights horizons mm -hmm. right and then or I was in, you know, performing in a, on a high school stage, right? Like it's, they're doing beautiful professional theater in a park with people, right? Or like also it's the way that public works works mm -hmm. in, in New York City where they're making theater with hundreds of citizens of New York City. Um, yeah. You know, it's so interesting to think about the, the questions you're raising about you know, finding, answering the, the, the question, answering the nebulous question of what is the thing that you most need out of this, you know, and your decision that when you were in New York, you were, you were seeing this community in Philadelphia, are very drawn, there was something exciting or drawing you to that energy, even more so than the career that you were creating at the time in New York, if I, if I'm phrasing that correctly, yeah. mm -hmm. but the intricacies of really listening, deep listening to yourself about, I mean, you know, as a deep feeler, you're following, you're following the energy wherever it's going, but you also have to then have the courage to take yourself out of that situation and, and follow, follow the stream wherever it wants to lead you. Mm -hmm. um, are there times where, so it's safe to say, I guess, that community, which was direct, what Directors Gathering was about, was, mm -hmm. um, and and 
you're there as a membership organization, correct, to help and support regional theater directors and to give them uh, opportunities to to connect and also to learn more as in the example of the workshop that you're going to be doing upcoming. Mm -hmm. um, what have you, what has most surprised you about your work as an administrator in directors gathering since you started in 2014? Um, I think, well, let's see. I, well, it was surprising. I mean, the, the beginning of it personally of like what you named for the surprise of, I want to go do director's gathering and that to people still at, you know, at the time when I was starting to for years, well, what are you directing? And I'd say I'm directing director's gathering. Like I've decided to do a several year gig that I've created. And it's basically like a new it's show. A every, exactly. And we put <laughs> on a new day. show every week. Right. Um, and our audience, instead of our audience being, you know, folks coming to see the work, our audience are fellow directors. Um, and so that, that was a big surprise to just shift that and figure out that I could use my my visioning and my work and my experience as a, as a freelance director to generate a, a hub and to generate an organization for other directors. Um, I, yeah, I found that to be, to, to be definitely surprising. And another thing too, that I, I found to be um, surprising was, and you know, I had my little, my little mascot show up here, Miss Stella, is um, in the beginning of fine, I, I, Director's Gathering began in, <laughs> in July of 2014, we received our startup funding, and my daughter was born on September 3rd of that year. So, um, the startup, lot, startup. <laughs> there it is. And I, up until that moment was, you know, navigating what it be to be a parent. And at the time, didn't really have a lot of other folks in my life who also were parents in the field of theater. I had folks in my life who were parents, not in theater. Um, and I felt really isolated. I felt very alone. And, and I'm sure as those of us who are parents and work in theater can all relate. And it, this was pre also my friend, Rachel Spencer Hewitt has created this organization called PAL, Parent Artist Ad Advocacy League, um, who's creating all of these beautiful gatherings and resources for parent artists um, because it was addressing just that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have this infant and now I'm running a nonprofit mm -hmm. for other directors that I, let's roll. And there are people who are working for DG and we have, we have to do this. Um, so looking back, you know, I, I found it to then be surprising though, how you can have a family actually, mm -hmm. and you can shape that process and more and more and more now with PAL and with the folks who've been working um, like Theater in the X and Power Street and folks who've been our producers for Jam like Starfire and Phoebe mm -hmm. Schaub and now Brianna de Clarell and Katrina Shoby, all of them along the way have helped us name as an organization what we should be doing to help people mm -hmm. um, to identify that Stella can be there as long as it's a safe space. And, you know, and we can have to identify sometimes when it's an adult only room mm -hmm. um, or a grown up. <laughs> but, but how do you look at a rehearsal process? How do you look, right? And mm -hmm. how do you engage with um, family friendly spaces? Because, or, or caregiving spaces. You, it might not be children. It might be guardians. It might be aging parents that people are taking mm -hmm. care of. Or, right, so that, that's life. That's, that's yeah. life. And I had been so far up until that moment, so siloed into a professional theater runs this way and this way right, only. Right. And sometimes, I mean, I do think that one of the things about, for better or worse about a smaller theater is you just kind of, and I'm using the word, make it up as you go along, because yeah. certainly you're using your history and your wisdom that hopefully you've gained, but you're also just like, this seems like the right choice. Come on, we're going to rehearsal can you play, you know, can, can you watch rehearsal with me today? You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. not, not ideal, but then there's all these benefits that come out of it as well, I think too. So it's nice to see that there's focused 
thinking going on about how do we make this better? How, how do how do we figure out best, you know, not, not that there is a best practice, but, you know, how do we codify it and say, yeah, like it can work this way and it yeah. can work this way and it can work yeah. this way as well. And um, be op- and also be open to people saying it can work this way, even if you haven't. And that's back to surprises and, and is just considering back to George right. C. Wolf, the answer is in the room. <laughs> and and what's the downside of it? What is, what is the, you know, is right. Exactly. The answer is in the room. Yeah. Um, I, I want to make sure that we spend time on the mm-hmm. projects that you have coming up. We talked a little bit about you were really inspired by Jackie Goldfinger's idea of taking a memoir and, and, a, and, a, and a sort of a workbook idea yeah. um, for, for the things that you're working on. I, I want to delve a little bit more into that. Yes, I would. Yeah, Jackie Goldfinger, um, playwright here in Philly, um, a playwright, an international playwright. Um, just we, we were chatting last night, actually, and she thinks I'm joking, but I'm not joking. She really is, has been consistently and or quite organically, like not on purpose, a guiding light. So choices she makes, because she just, she is someone who, she's just such a big thinker. Um, And she knows how to challenge our medium and expand our medium in ways that um, are really exciting and I think necessary. And so some of those ways she's done that is um, in two ways specifically is one, she she, um, created page by page subscribers. So essentially a membership but um, Patreon, um, where playwrights um, are members of a platform, a digital platform where they receive monthly newsletters and there's a group on Facebook and, but it's all centric on resources and tools and engagement for for playwrights or folks who write plays Um, and their collaborators. And what I found to be so great and refreshing about it, it was just so simple, right? Like it wasn't another nonprofit it wasn't a theme. It, it was just a relate a very direct relationship, and mm-hmm. also using a digital platform, doing it in a very smart way. Um, and then the other facet, and that that has really inspired me with how directors gathering is membership. Something for us to just keep in mind of how that that can be simple. Um, and then the other component that I I love is that how she teaches playwriting. There are not. There are not a ton of playwriting book, like how to play, how to write a play. There are not a ton of books in our American, you know, even international. There are just not a ton of books. And you see it in our, in our programs, right? Everyone teaches pretty much the same handful of books. And then directing is even more of a, <laughs> of a, uh, a, a dearth. Like I just, it's unbelievable to me of how, you know, we don't have more opportunities for there to be published writings and tools and conversations about playwriting and directing. Um, and so she has created a workbook because she teaches classes um, at higher ed and also has taught um, workshops that she runs uh, that I, I've taken such inspiration from to do the same for directing, um, to, to compile all of the feedback and all of the experience and all of the tools and techniques that I've acquired over 15 years and put it in a place like Ann Bogart, like Katie Mitchell, um, and really just hone in on how do we do this, um, and also naming something that is a little bit different though I have to say about Katie's book and Anne's book. Um, and it's closer to, I've been really inspired by Adrian Mary Brown, um, her book, Emergent Strategy, really inspired by her, um, is uh, embracing that directing, of course, is an art and a craft and there are, there are tools and there are ways of, of doing it. Um, but also it's within, we talk about humanity and within culture and a world and a society that is is beyond theater, that that has to be addressed as well, right? So you study theater, but you also have to, you also have to constantly be connecting into the world around you. And so that's where I'm really interested in this visioning practice. Um, And I've started teaching online classes every couple of months um, to directors from all over the country, which has been really, really cool mm-hmm. to get to share just this practice of like asking questions of ourselves, creative therapy for directors. But then it's how do you put that into play 
literal play as a director? Mm -hmm. And how are you creating your technique and practice as a director and naming that for yourself and others? Um, so yeah, I think, you know, over time, more and more folks have been saying to me, I think you sh this should probably be written down, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's time. Really, um, so busy, you know, <laughs> busy doing it and thinking through it that, yeah, that, it, yeah. that, that becomes one more thing. But mm -hmm. if your inspiration is coming from Jackie and she's, and she's, uh, you know, been able through no small feet oh, yeah. to be able to make these things happen, it's so important to have people who are lighting, lighting away to yes. say, ah, it's possible, it's possible. And I agree with you, yeah, I would love to have a place. I mean, I have, you know, in the bookshelf back here, you know, the many scholars who have come together to talk about directing Beckett, which is its own thing, you know, it's its own. But I think these sort of ideas that you're speaking about, how how do we, all of all of what this last 15 minutes was about really, I, I know I would be, you know, so, so, delighted to be able to go to that place because we don't often have these conversations or at least you know I know many people who who don't you know which is why directors gathering is so important so where are you in the process of that right now just getting it out of your head and on the page yes yes it's it's yeah it's um it's getting out of my head and onto actual written form um I did also decide to start writing it because I you know every time I sat down on the computer I'm it just boom into the void uh so the more I've been I've been writing it down um I also I'm and I shared a little bit of this with you earlier but like this sense of, I think it's also wants to be the title wants to be forever emerging. Um, mm -hmm. Because I also this visioning practice, this practice of, of, of self care and centering um, director as as human and guide in a process um, is also something that is, I would argue is relatively new, meaning it being named relatively new. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are in our directing ecosystem or director ecosystem that I really, really want to elevate. Um, and they've been elevated by DG, but to really in some sort of written form. Mm -hmm. um, be also because a lot of us are also around the same generation of makers um, who were raised as theater makers and professionals and educators in a certain, in a certain way, because that was the time of the last 15 to 20 years um, that I would argue came from even before the last 15 to 20 mm -hmm. years. Um, it's, you know, the American regional theater model, which really began mainly in the 60s with the funding from the NEA. Um, and then we have students we're teaching and we have emerging directors that are coming up and early career, career directors. And we're, but the thing is, is what's happening is it's, we, for, I had always been under the impression that it was a vertical. It's not a vertical. It never was a vertical. <laughs> and it can't be seen as a vertical because mm -hmm. uh, that'll be, a, that is, it's already a problem. Yeah, Socio yeah. socioeconomically it is a mm -hmm. real problem mm -hmm. um and so to me i also think it's really important to be acknowledging that within what it my god i i guess i'm early i what does it mean to be early career like as a director right my god I'm, okay so don't get me started on that one you know i mean but well it's hard i mean i do think like i'm like aren't we always emerging don't we hope don't i hope that you know I mean, no one else may hope, but don't you hope you get to be to the point where you're 80 or whatever, and you're still out there and all of those years that you put into this, mm -hmm. you are still, you know, you're still doing it. So you're still emerging. Yes. And that that's, a, but see, and I, that's where the thing is like, I'm so interested in re like reclaiming emerging yeah. and you know what I mean? And, and making that something where it's the argument where it's constantly an evolutionary yes, and process. And it's a good thing and you're not being judged by it and you're not getting yeah. gigs because of that. Or and or you're established you're an established director and so you're expected to only get certain kind of gigs. And if mm -hmm. those gigs dry up, then what? Like it's just it's such a yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> well, and I'm and I'm when you when you told me the title Forever Emerging, I was like, "Oh, thank thank thankful thankful for all of that for the redefining the language for toppling not that vertical isn't a thing you know but it i just think there's so many different ways to get to the to franz kafka's castle you know what i mean you go uh -huh. you go down many different many different roads and um 
Well, Jill, I'm hearing um, hearing my my mother's clock chiming in the background, Aww. which tells me it's six o'clock. So there's so much more to talk about, but I'm very excited about the work you're doing with Directors Gathering and just the opportunities that you're creating for people and the way you're thinking about things is is just very exciting. So thank you. thank you so much for taking time to share it all with us. And, um, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Thank you. Where thank we, you so how we much. all can benefit. You're, you're, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. More soon. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks to all of you who joined us this evening uh, for Into the Absurd and uh, thinking about coming on next week. I hope you will when Gabrielle Corsaro joins us. Gabrielle is the artistic director of Angel Pirate Productions here in Philadelphia. And she's doing some very interesting work with uh, raising and elevating voices that are not, not really heard very often, creating uh, original work and helping people to, um, to get that work out there. So we'll talk to her about her journey as an artist, as a creator, as an artistic director. And that's next Saturday on Into the Absurd. And in the meantime, from everyone here at the IRC, just wishing you a very safe and a very healthy week ahead.